After the San Antonio Spurs landed the number one overall pick in the NBA draft lottery earlier this week, many predict that top prospect Victor Wimbanyama will enjoy a successful career with the storied franchise. According to NBA insider Mark Stein, the young Phenom will have the benefit of learning from a Hall of Famer, as Tim Duncan is expected to work with Wimbanyama upon his arrival in San Antonio. The Spurs drafted Duncan number one overall in 1997, and he went on to become one of the best power forwards ever to grace the basketball court. He led the franchise to five NBA titles and was named NBA MVP in back-to-back -back seasons in 2002 and 2003. San Antonio is certainly hoping that Wimbunima will follow a similar path. The 7 feet 5 inches Frenchman is considered to be the most promising prospect to enter the NBA in quite a while, so he will have high expectations placed on his shoulders when he enters the league. Working directly with Duncan will surely help when Bunyama's career get off to the right start. After arriving in the United States on Monday, when Bunyama rode the subways in New York City for the first time and threw out the first pitch at a Yankees game during a jam-packed start to his week. But after hearing his name called by NBA Commissioner Adam Silver during Thursday's draft, things have picked up yet again. When Bunyama arrived in San Antonio on Friday afternoon, after a two-hour delay leaving New York, to hundreds of fans waiting for him at the airport. When he did arrive, he was taken to a team dinner that night with Spurs staffers as well as team legends Tim Duncan, David Robinson, Manu Ginobili and Sean Elliott. When Bunyama and fellow French player Saidi Sissoko, who was taken number 44 overall as the Spurs' only other draft pick, were introduced to the San Antonio faithful at an event on the Riverwalk at the Arneson River Theatre. Following the event, they were whisked away to the AT&T Center, where they took pictures in their new jerseys before being introduced by Spurs general manager Brian Wright. When Bunyama will get some time to relax after Saturday, but he still has things to get done around the city, including going house hunting. The last 72 hours have been really tiring, when Bunyama said. But I'm really enjoying the moment. Everybody is doing a perfect job around me. Everybody is doing their best. I have my family and my people around me who love me. Everywhere I've been I've been welcomed warmly. It's really comfortable. I'm really happy to be in this position. When Bunyama and Sissoko, who is from Paris, first played against each other when the two were 10 years old. Sissoko joked that when Bunyama was already six foot six at that point. They also played against each other last season when Wimbunyama's Metropolitan's 92 squad played a pair of exhibition games against the G League Ignite, with which Sissoko played last year. Now, the two get to be teammates. The first time they'll take the court together will be next week at Spurs Summer League practice. It's unknown exactly what role Wimbunyama will have this summer, but the NBA did announce the schedule for the Vegas Summer League, and the Spurs open against number 2 pick Brandon Miller and the Charlotte Hornets on July 7th before facing number 3 pick Scoot Henderson and the Portland Trail Blazers on July 9th. Victor Wimbunyama had grown up in the suburbs of Paris dreaming about this moment since he was 12 years old. He had long felt as though he was different from everyone else, as though he could be great, and not just in basketball. He'd spent the past several months, and even the last few days, exuding cool calm about his future. But when his moment finally arrived, he couldn't help but cry. The San Antonio Spurs selected when Bunyama number one overall in Thursday's NBA draft at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. In doing so, they officially started the NBA career of one of the most highly anticipated prospects in league history. One of the best feelings of my life, when Bunyama, 19, said. Probably the best night of my life. I've been dreaming about this for so long. It's a dream come true. It's incredible. The Charlotte Hornets selected Alabama's Brandon Miller with the number two pick. 
The Portland Trail Blazers chose Scoot Henderson, a guard from the NBA's G League Ignite, with the third pick. The Thompson Twins from Overtime Elite, a semi-professional league for prospects, went next. Houston took Amin Thompson with the fourth pick, and Detroit selected Orza Thompson, number five. Each team had five minutes to make its selection in the first round. Although the Spurs pick had been submitted early in the allotted time, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver waited until all five minutes had elapsed before announcing the selection. Longest five minutes of my life, when Bunyama said. His stomach began to flutter and his family members grew quiet. They began looking at their watches. Then Silver finally called when Bunyama's name and a new chapter of his life began. He hugged his sister and his brother, who both cried with joy. He hugged his parents and then his agents. Later, backstage, someone handed him a Spurs jersey with his name on it. Someone knew this was happening somehow, he quipped. In San Antonio, Spurs coach Greg Popovich was thrilled. He's not Lebron, or Tim, or Kobe, or anyone else, Popovich told reporters there. He's Victor. When Bunyamut talked about working to win a championship as soon as possible and about the Texas breakfast tacos he'd heard so much about. 14 players from outside the United States have been selected first overall in the NBA draft. When Bunyamut is the first international top pick who did not play high school or college basketball in the United States since the Italian player Andrea Bargnani, whom the Toronto Raptors selected first in 2006. At more than 7 feet tall, with the agility and ball handling skills of a much smaller player, when Bunyama has drawn comparisons to NBA stars like Giannis Antetokounmpo Campo and Kevin Durant. He has long admired those players, but he has often said he doesn't want to be like anyone in particular. He has said he wants to be something that's never been seen before and will never be seen again. On Wednesday, the NBA took the unusual step of hosting a news conference just for Wimbunyama before the other prospects addressed the news media in groups. Welcome to San Antonio, a reporter from Texas said during Wimbunyama's news conference. With the draft still a day away, the reporter quickly added, not yet. Wimbunyama smiled. Not yet, he said. When Bunyama had been projected as the number one pick for this draft even before the 2022-23 season. The Spurs won the draft lottery in May as when Bunyama watched with friends and family in France. I was just thinking I was feeling lucky that they got the pick as a franchise that has that culture and that experience in winning and making, creating good players, when Bunyama said on Wednesday. I really can't wait. The Spurs have had a strong history with French players and with the top pick in the draft. They drafted the French point guard Tony Parker late in the first round in 2001. He won four championships with the Spurs and was named the most valuable player of the finals in 2007. Another French player, Boris Dial, spent more than four seasons in San Antonio and was part of the 2014 championship team. The Spurs have also had great success making the first pick in the draft. In 1987, they used the number one pick to take David Robinson, who won the league's MVP award in 1995, was a 10-time All-Star and won two championships with the Spurs. Then in 1997, San Antonio chose Tim Duncan first overall. Duncan went on to win five championships and two MVP awards, and he was named Finals MVP three times. Coming into a team with that kind of history might seem like a lot of pressure for a teenager like Wimbunyama, but he has appeared to be unruffled by it. On Wednesday, Wimbunyama had been asked about a comment from a pundit who said that his career would be a disappointment if it wasn't like that of Durant or the Hall of Fame center Hakeem Olajuwon. Wimbunyama calmly dismissed the premise. I've got such high expectations for myself that I'm immune to all this stuff, he said. So I really don't care. When Bunyama grew up in La Chesnay, west of Paris, but left at age 14 to live about 20 minutes away in the dorms of his childhood club, Nanterre. 
He went to high school across the street. He has played professionally in France since he was 15, often competing against and with players much older than him. It meant he had few opportunities to lead a team. But last season, he starred for Metropolitan's 92, a French club based in the Paris suburb of Lavallo's Parrot. Most of his games were broadcast on the NBA app. Only this year I had the opportunity to learn to know this kind of responsibility, when Bunyama said. It is the best thing I learned in my career so far. The team had created a plan to prepare Wen Bunyama physically and mentally for the NBA. In turn, Wen Bunyama became deeply invested in his teammates growth. One day in April, he told his agent Bauna Ndiaye that he needed a second athletic trainer because the first was overloaded. Ndiaye, assuming Wen Bunyama meant a second trainer for himself, found one and had been prepared to pay the second trainer's salary to satisfy his client. But when Bunyama told him the trainer was for the whole team, the club eventually agreed to hire another trainer. When Bunyama was named the most valuable player of his French league, the youngest ever to win that award, and led his team to a second place finish. They lost in the finals last week. He got to New York on Monday, excited to experience the city he had seen only in films and on television. He rode the subway to Yankee Stadium in the Bronx from Columbus Circle in Manhattan on Tuesday. He jumped over the turnstile as he exited the train station in homage to Jacques Chirac, the former French president, who hopped a turnstile in the Paris metro in 1980. When Bunyama threw out the ceremonial first pitch for the Yankees game against Seattle and laughed after it sailed wide. It had otherwise been difficult for Wen Bunyama to simply go out and see the city. The anticipation for what heights his career could reach had been building even before Thursday's official welcome into the NBA. He was the first player to walk into the green room at Barclays Center on Thursday night. About two and a half hours before he heard his name called, he walked onto the stage for a moment. As he left the floor a minute later, he turned back to look at the stage one more time. This is when it started to feel a little bit real, when Bunyama said after he was selected. It still isn't completely real. At that moment I started visualizing. In San Antonio, Spurs fans felt a new sense of hope after a stretch of losing seasons. They walked around yelling, go Spurs go. In one bar, fans passed around a cutout of Wen Bunyama's head for photographs. At a draft night party at the Spurs arena, the crowd was chanting Wemby an hour before the draft had even begun. Wen Bunyama said he had felt so much love from Spurs fans since San Antonio won the draft lottery last month. I think there's murals of me in the city center in San Antonio, he said. It's just incredible. I could not ask for a better welcome than this.